That's Would you like good. some of this authentic, real sriracha on your plate? I mean, I can... <laughs> hey, so you, she had a couple uh, drinks before, so... My two favorite places to film are the 626 in Lower Manhattan. And now a friend from the 626 has opened up a Thai street market restaurant in Lower Manhattan. One of my favorite streets in New York City has got to be Grand Street. Running east to west, Grand Street turns from Jewish to hipster to Cantonese to Italian to fashionistas, which makes sense because that's the Lower East Side to Chinatown to Little Italy to Soho. It's such a diverse street. And now one of my favorite new spots is Nori Thai Bazaar. On the corner of Grand and Forsyth, it's definitely bringing a dope mix of authentic Bangkok and NYC. Nobody's traveling for a while, but Nori makes me feel like I'm halfway there. We're going to be sitting down today to learn about Thai food, Thai language, and even get into some Thai stereotypes. It's going to be fun. Let's go. Before we hit Nori Thai for our Bangkok street food experience, we got to stop by this Bangkok grocery store because this is the only Thai market in lower Manhattan. Actually, a lot of people don't know that these crispy seaweed snacks are from Thailand. These crispy mango. Damn, they got the Thai Lay's. Okay, David, I've never had this star gooseberry, so we gotta get one of these dried fruit ones. Okay, definitely the soy milk. I did not know this brand Foco is from Thailand. All right, let's just get the lychee. Last Thai drink, Caraval. Hell yeah, I gotta get the energy drink. Guys, I have the energy drink. If you guys didn't know, Red Bull actually originally is a Thai company that um, a European bought. So you're saying Red Bull may ploy and sriracha are all originally from Thailand. All Thai products. Yo, I guess what I'm saying is, Andrew, just looking at the Thai drink, it's got like five different languages. And it kind of actually speaks to where Thailand is located. All right, Andrew, most people know sriracha to be the red Hue Fong Foods one. There's a yellow sriracha and this red chili sauce, this is the original Thai sriracha that this sauce is based off of. The Hue Fong Foods one is really strong. Yeah, it's interesting because Thai food is really spicy, but from the authentic srirachas that I've had, it's not as strong as the Hue Yo, We are going on a Thai extravaganza. I did not know that there's this much Thai culture down here in Lower Manhattan. And just like how I need my Thai food flavorful, I need a good night of sleep. And that's actually been proven to have a huge effect on the rest of your day. So that's why it was important for us to partner with Helix for this video. Video. With their custom sleep quiz, Helix helped me identify that I actually needed a firm mattress, which I really didn't know before. So both me and David, we ended up with Dawn Lux. I can honestly say it's helped me get better sleep and I wake up more energized, which wasn't always the case with my old mattress that felt way too much like memory foam. Surprisingly, this is a very light mattress, which makes it super easy to move. So you should think about getting Helix for five quick reasons. Number one, it's fun and easy to buy online. Number two, it comes in a box and it's easy to roll out. Three, you only need to give it an hour to expand, unlike some other box mattresses that need an entire day. Four, shipping is completely free. And five, you have a hundred night sleep trial. So if you don't like the mattress, you can get a full refund. So you have more than three months to decide basically like nothing to lose. So if you're interested in Helix, then click on the link in the description down below for $200 off your first order at helixsleep.com slash fungbros. What's going on guys? We have arrived outside of Nori Thai Bazaar. This is one of our favorite spots in Manhattan, Andrew. It's just right on Grand Street. And their whole theme here is they're trying to recreate a Bangkok night market restaurant. Yeah, I really feel like that what they were able to capture is an authentic Thai experience. Today, we're gonna be trying Thai street food, Thai cocktails. They got pastries in there, they got everything. All right, in front of us, we have a humongous Bangkok street food feast in front of us. But we're also sitting here with Kimmy Lux, our food Instagrammer friend out of New York. There is a lot of Chinese influence in Thai cuisine. Obviously not every dish and Thai cuisine is very, very vast and very diverse. A lot a lot of the food that we're eating today is from Central Thailand. Central Thailand happens to be the region of Thailand with a particularly heavy amount of Chinese influence. But we got to get into these dishes, and I'll tell you this: we might need to start with the frog legs. Okay. Should we start with the frog no, legs? Yeah, 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 yeah. Thai frog legs. Oh my goodness! Oh, she went all in right off the bat. Frog meat is very tender. It almost, honestly, does taste like a very tender chicken wing. It's not fishy or weird at all. In a weird way, I don't know how to say it, less froggy than a lot of frog legs I've had. Best frog legs I've ever had. Crying tiger steak. Ooh. Look at the sauce. We're just dipping meat, but it feels like we're taking I'm shots. So it's tense, man. Oh my god, this is amazing. Oh. I've never had any steak like this before. That was a huge piece of steak but it is seriously melting my mouth. I personally like it because it's actually not as sour as some of the other dipping sauces I've had. Right, would you so like good. some of this authentic, real sriracha on your plate? I mean, I can... 
Yep. <laughs> hey, so you, she had a couple uh, drinks before, so. Hey, hey pour out. that up like we at H I N. Hey, bottle <laughs> service. There's no more bottle service for a while, guys. I'm just like, where has this been all my life? Well, it wasn't served uh -huh. at that Thai restaurant that you were working at back in the day, I'm assuming. Oh! Yo, I've actually low key cracked my tooth on the skin of a cereal. Did before. you really? Thai crispy pork. Get that crunch. Wow. I said. This is really, really good. You know what it is? It's really crispy on the top, but it's not hard. And the way they do it here is the pork is so tender that once you get through that initial crispy layer, it's just really soft after that. I think in a lot of hipster spots, there's a tendency to do too much to it. You know what I mean? But they left it how it was and you just tasted the pork. Super simple. Every time I see one of these fish with everything on top, that's when mm -hmm. I know it's gonna be good. For this one, I have yellow sriracha. Would you like some on your plate? This is also I mean, another. Yeah, of course. I want it all over. <laughs> hit, hit me in the corner. What? Wow. What is this, art class? Kerpau basil fish. Fish is cooked perfectly. Look, I got the little fried basil leaf on it. This actually reminds me of childhood. A lot of the time, when you order a fish and it's really like kind of cheap, you're gonna get like tilapia, but this is red snapper, so you know this is super yeah. high quality. Yeah. It looks like you could smack somebody with that fish. Just, it's just red. Just go. Fusion section. Go for the fries. Are you a fry person? I love fries. Right. These are actually some of the best fries in New York City. You want to eat fries when they're just still crunchy. And this stayed crunchy for a while because we've been eating other things. Yo, this tastes like something that a fast food chain over in Thailand would uh, localize for. Right. Yo, those what, fries. What do you, what do you give those fries? I, Way more than five. That off made the okay. charts. Go ahead, grab a wing. This is the fish sauce wings. Sprinkle with so some nice. fried garlic. Go first. Always. Fish sauce wings. They eat this in Thailand, but this is Nori's version with a twist. I'm gonna just do my little version where I crack the bone. It has like a really amazing like balance of every mm. flavor that you need in a wing that's not too saucy, not too dry. Thai wings are underrated. You know Korean wings, but this is the but guys, not only is the vibe here cool, but the mm -hmm. food is so good. I, I forgot. Honestly, this is giving me energy. Not gonna lie. This is giving me energy. <laughs> she needs it. She needs it. Here. Here is their very own green curry lobster roll. And being from New Hampshire, I know you ate lobster rolls. Oh right? yeah, definitely for sure. You guys don't call them lobster rolls, don't you guys call them lobster? Lobster. I mean, lobster roll. Lobster Damn. rolls. Go Just for go for okay, it. Okay, okay, okay. We family. It's a family. It's a family affair out here. I ain't even mad that it's dripping. Like, can I just say this is like the best invention? Like, I've never had curry lobster roll. Like, have you? You know, you're a food Instagrammer, so like when you eat it and it's really messy, but you still enjoy it, that's when you know it's really good. I mean, it's all about the experience. You need that little bit of mess. The mess lets you know it's decadent. You're looking good, because you need to lick that. Eight out of 10 times when you try to do a fusion, uh, Western and Eastern, it doesn't turn out right, but this is one of those times that it turned out right. And we're moving on to the pork belly dishes here. Both of these are from Central Thailand. Thailand actually has like five different regions. It has Central, East, North, Northeast, and South. And each one of these regions has like their own cuisine. Thai fried rice. So most people say the Thai food has to have salty, sweet, sour, spicy. Those four. However, I read something from a Thai chef that actually said adds a fifth flavor of bitter in there and says you only have to have three of those five. That's a good way of thinking about everything because I would say this crispy pork and Chinese broccoli, to me, it's sweet, salty, and a little bitter. A lot of the Thai food in America that you've had is almost like saying, oh, I've had Chinese food, but I've only gone to like P.F. Chang's mm -hmm. or Panda Express, where obviously the food can get pretty pricey, but it's really not that authentic. Curry duck leg, oh, with the pineapple. That was crucial. It, it added that sweet, fruity juice wow. to it. That's the thing about Thai cuisine. It's so multi-layered. I have a crispy duck leg, but then the curry is a little spicy, very creamy, sweet, and then you throw on the fruit side, which is the pineapple. The way they did the pineapple is like perfect texture. Thai food is almost like Kobe. You know how Kobe was high up on everything? It was like just like strong flavors in every direction. Thai chive cake. Yo, I gotta say, I did not expect this. This is almost like a chive snack, where it's like... I almost kind of taste Japanese. Yeah, bit. almost tastes like fried seaweed of some type, and it's really soft. It has like a light, crispy outer, but it kind of looks like a dumpling on the inside. I'm yeah. really impressed. I love things that are crunchy on the outside and soft on the inside. Like, cow soy. soy. This is one of my favorite 
And they use egg noodles too. I love egg noodles. This might be my favorite dish. The cow soy is spicy, it's creamy, it's got that citrusy, that nice curry flavor, and then it has the crispy noodles in with the soft noodles. I think the cow soy here has the perfect amount of like liquid to stew type vibe. I am so surprised and impressed at how these noodles were able to stay plump and didn't soak up too much. What you got? I'm just. Oh. Okay, yeah, I'll thank be, you. Uh, we just tried 10 different things. They were all good. What are you guys going back for? I will go back for the fries. It's the easiest thing to dip in. I'm going back for the Chinese broccoli. Woo! And I'm going to go back for the crying tiger steak because I realized I forgot to eat it with the sticky rice and the lettuce. All right, so we just finished up with our Bangkok night market feast and now we are trying some Thai snacks that we got from the Bangkok grocery earlier. Kwa Kling curry pizza. What's it smell like, Kimmy? Smells Thai. <laughs> That's all I can say. I actually taste the pizza though. Oh, I taste that lemongrass powder. It encaptures the flavor of curry pretty well. That's actually pretty good. I give this a four out of five. I kind of think four out of five too. Four point five. Wow. Me clap. Oh. That one tastes mm. like alu buja, which is an Indian snack. There's fruit inside of here. It almost tastes like there's like cranberries mixed you know, into a very uh, light and crispy sweet cake. That tastes like it was more made out of stall than out of a package. Yeah. yeah I actually would do definitely five. Five out of this five. Yeah. Four point five out of five for me. I like okay, crispy so white sardines. It's Tom Yum flavors. Woo! That's a strong fish flavor. One of the girls was telling me earlier that she likes just the original flavor better. I would give this a, a three out of five. I think this would be good for drinking. I, I kind of say it's my favorite. Without the drinks, I gotta give it like a, a 2.5. Wow. Real critical. I give it more than 2.5. I would say this is a four. All right, guys, here we have the gooseberry. I've never it. had a gooseberry before. Okay, this try. definitely looks like a Vietnamese. The tamarind really. treat, right? Yes. But even the streets out Wait, there, I don't know if they have The gooseberry was more accessible than tamarind. I'm comparing this to the tamarind snack. The tamarind is a little too spicy, so I like this one a lot better. And then you have these cocoa rice rolls made out of coconut milk, but these are the durian flavored ones. Are you a durian fan? Yes, I know. Depends on how. Depends on the execution right. and the form. Exactly. Huh? I smell it. I smell the durian. It yes. smells amazing. Woo! Literally like a roll of durian inside, like you just smell it. This is my favorite so far. This is the most mainstream tasting. I think everybody's gonna like it. And if you need to try the durian flavor, this is the best way to do it. Southeast Asian band, they know how to do durian. Last but not least, we have the crispy mango. Freeze dried. Freeze dried mangoes. Yo, would this be fire in some breakfast cereal? Or with ice cream. You know what it is? I think that this was my favorite thing that we had, but if I was to eat it solo, I would have to go with the durian rolls. Okay, what's your favorite? I might say this because this sticks to my teeth more. Because I just have never had this fruit before, I'm gonna roll with the star gooseberry. This is Kimmy Lux Endorse, the cocoa rolls. Cool, hey, Kimmy, where can they find you on Instagram? So where you can find blog? me at Kimmy Lux at K-I-M-M-I-L-U-X. Uh, that wraps it up for our food and snack section and we're actually about to go check out some Thai cocktails and to learn some Thai slang. Okay, so we have a selection of Thai beers here. Uh, could you guys explain to us each one? The Singha beer is the, the most popular one. But it's the first beer that comes in US, so people know it as Thai beer. The second one is Charm, so it comes a little later, but it become popular too. So what about these two liquors? Because I think a lot of people did not even know that Thailand has liquor. The most one that people know in here, even in Thailand, is Mekong. So this one is the most popular here. Praya is it's a high-end brand, also smoother. I feel like you got a lot of jokes. Come on, get in this. <laughs> My favorite word is sap. Sap means really spicy, like tasty. But if you if we use in slang, which just means um, something very cool, really pretty, really sexy. Is that like a comment you would make on Instagram or something right. like sap? Right, right, okay. right, right. Right now we're gonna make like special Thai drinks called butter pea. Um, we use like a slowly vanilla first for one ounce, and then um, we use like this one. You know, the butter pea fine, it's like a Thai, thai flower, it does have like a purple color. Yeah, so we're gonna put this on the top. This one to top it. So oh, it's to make give it really the nice. Color. Yeah. All right, I'm here with Gig, one of the servers here. Gig, are you ready to get into the hot seat about some Thai stereotypes? Okay, I'm okay. ready. Is it true that Thailand is the land of smiles? Definitely, yes. I would say like Thai people they don't like speak English very well. So, like they try to tell a lot of people when they you know they don't know how to communicate it. They just smile. And most Thai people uh, they're very Buddhist, right? Ninety-five percent. Are you Buddhist? Yes, but I'm not strict Buddhist. <laughs> You're a bad Buddhist. Is it, Buddhist. is it true that sometimes the expat people they get act a little crazy? The, the the funny thing is if you come from states, 
and then you have like some a little like, problems you just show the state ID or whatever like you like from America it's like okay okay you could you could go 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 okay what's the best street in Bangkok Bangkok I would love you can go to the um, weekend Chatujak market which is like um open air uh, local market so they sell every single thing if you go to Bangkok have to go to the Chatujak weekend market hi my name is Andy I'm the owner of Nori Thai my name is Chad I work with Andy we wanted to introduce Thai cuisine to a neighborhood that never really had Thai cuisine there are people coming in here by themselves knowing that they're going to see someone else here you can shoot the shit, you can watch the game you drink a little bit you, you enjoy the food you enjoy the environment that, that's our number one priority all right everybody that wraps up our video at nori thai um man that was just like an entire like thai day i'm going to thailand I that's have. To, I did not get a chance go. to go. Andrew, you've been there. I'm going to Thailand. It's one of those cultures that everybody's had some form of the food, but not everybody's been there. And actually, there's not that many Thai Americans where you'll just kind of bump into them randomly, necessarily. So that's why it's really cool to have restaurants like Nori Thai. And the thing I like about it is that I've been to more expensive Thai restaurants in Manhattan before, but it's not an engaging environment. You come here, everybody's friendly. They have that neighborhood community vibe where you can ask questions and have fun with people and uh, I think that to me is part of the Thai culture and that's very important. Alright you guys please let us know in the comments section below what is your favorite Thai dish. We could have had it today, we could have not had it today, it could have been more of a basic dish like Pad Thai or Pad Siu, Pad Ki Mao, it's all good. Let us know in the comments section below. Number two, let us know another spot we need to check out in the area. Alright everybody, hit that like button, click subscribe, turn on the notifications, and until next time, we out. Peace. Mongol John. Back at it again. Hi. I know you want to share some of your food, so I'm gonna sit down with Let's you. Let's do it. Awesome. We're gonna see John eat everything in about 30 seconds. This moment right here is what I live for. Let's oh, do okay. it. Okay. I gotta get this. We Put gotta get hands, this. Man. Oh, on, oh yeah, right, right, right. We Mongolian. We Mongolian over here. Wow. Boom. Okay. Hit him. What you got next? Chive Andrew, cake. Andrew hyped up the chive cake, so. It's interesting. I didn't, I didn't say it was my favorite. Whoa! Oh. The wings. Hit them. I'm gonna get you some authentic sriracha. Wow. Oh, okay, okay. Getting the king treatment right here. Boom! That's Woo. what I live for, man. That's One more, yo. This. Wow, he took the red snapper by the tail. No! Ah!